video i'll discuss about the uh, design of an isolated footing so what is isolated footing isolated footing is defined as a footing which is provided beneath the column to distribute the load safely to the bed soil this kind of footing is used to support single column and when the column are arranged relatively at longer distance this is most inexpensive kind of footing this is an, an image from the site where isolated footing is provided you can see in the four number of footings which is provided to receive the load from the column or pillar and it is provided for an individual column isolated footing also known as pad or spread footing are commonly used for shallow foundation in order to carry and spread concentrated load caused for example by columns or pillars and it can consist either of reinforced or non reinforced materials these are the types of isolated footing you can see our pad footing which is also known as rectangular footing then we have step footing and finally uh, slope footing the excess concrete from the rectangular footing is removed in case of the sloped footing design steps of an isolated footing the very first step is to calculate the area of footing required area required is equal to 1.1 times of p by q and here 10% is added for self weight of the footing it is why it is multiplied by 1.1 p is the unfactored load and if mass of soil acts it is added to p that is the weight of the soil that is backfilled into the trench q is the bearing capacity of the soil which depends upon the uh, nature and condition of the soil calculate pressure under footing and w is equal to pu by a plus minus mu by z a is the area of footing which is calculated from the above and z is the section modulus and for a rectangular footing z is equal to bd square by 6 b and d are width and depth of the footing w is the pressure acting on the footing from the soil as you can see in this figure and for consideration of moment uh, two ends of the footing will have two different uh, pressure one will have the minimum and another has the maximum and which is the factored soil pressure another step is to calculate maximum bending moment maximum one way shear and maximum two way shear so the two way shear produces a punching effect that is the punching shear the column rested on the footing tends to punch through the footing due to the shear stress that acts around the footing the fracture forms a truncated pyramid shaped failure section hence to avoid such failure a greater depth of foundation or footing has to be provided which we will discuss in the numerical part now another step is to check the depth against bending moment one way shear and two way shear as i just said the depth should be sufficient to resist all these step 5 calculate area of steel from maximum bending for maximum bending moment and check for development length so as we see this is the Uh, here ld represents the development length and the development length is required to transfer the stress from steel to the concrete without any failure another step is to check for bearing capacity of concrete of footing to ensure that the bearing stress of column does not exceed the bearing capacity of concrete last step is for the reinforcement detailing this is an uh, combined image for showing the reinforcement detailing of the isolated footing the mesh of the footing is placed over a layer of pcc in the field for the numerical go for the part 2 there is a link in the description thank you